Well, it's almost the end of the school year and you might be a little bit burnout. So in this video, I'm going to share some easy lesson ideas for math, reading, writing, and a little science as well. Welcome to Lessons for Little Blessings. I'm Tessa, and we're gonna go over some spring-themed lesson ideas that you can easily pick and choose from. And obviously you can do these any time of year. They just have a little bit of fun spring theme to them. So all these ideas and the documents that you'll need will be down in the description box below. So you can jump down there if you just wanna look through and print some ideas whether you need a reading idea or if you didn't have time to plan and you need a full lesson, I have you covered. So check out those documents and the time codes will also be down there below. So if you just wanna to jump to a certain um, subject area, then you can find that info down below. So let's get started. So let's start with some reading ideas. I kinda of have two that I'm gonna share. One is with a book and the other with a poem. So in springtime, you know, there's a lot of different weather. So that's kind of a big focus. So one fun book, if you have not heard of it before, you should definitely check it out. It's called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. If you do not have this book or do not choose to go buy it, you can find um, online, you can find people reading loud on YouTube is a great place to go. You can find a lot of books uh, with People reading them aloud so you can use that as a way to let your child read that book or have someone read it to them so that is one idea you can do and with that book there's just a lot of fun different fun things you know question throughout we can work on reading comprehension you can look through ahead of time and see if there's any different vocabulary that your child is not used to that you could talk about the poem that I think is kind of fun springtime poem and it goes it kind of goes along with the book so you could even break this up into a few different lessons out of it it's called it's raining pigs and noodles and um, this is in a bigger book of poems that you maybe have seen but this is a fun one that um, kids just really enjoy this poem and there's a lot you can do with it so this poem I've actually written out on strips to put in a pocket chart is just something I like to do. You obviously wouldn't have to do this, but what I like to do is pick some different vocabulary words. And this poem is great because it's got some that most students probably aren't familiar with. So for example, chrysanthemums. So you could use that as a chance to kind of talk about like, what is that? And they say hippopotami. So you could talk about you know, what is that plural singular? Um, so this poem lends itself to a lot of different things that way. I also like to cover up some words. We would call this like a close style. And um, I probably need to cover it up a little bit better because you can see my sticky note. <laughs> you can see right through that. Um, but this poem has a great rhyming pattern. And so as you read through it and you cover those up initially and the students have to kind of guess but obviously a educated guess based on the poem and rhyming and you know what makes sense and so using all of those skills then they guess on what that word is that's covered up so that's a fun way to do that poem and then you can reveal it and then they get all excited that they're right. You can turn this into a writing activity too or do just a writing extension where you give them just this prompt. It's raining blank and blank and they can come up with their own and then you could even do something like this where then they get to draw a picture and illustrate it. So that turns into another um, fun little writing and then even art. Here is another writing activity idea. So this is just a type of graphic organizer to organize thinking. So for young kiddos, you could use this um, and just only this. And so it kind of gives them some sentence starters. So springtime is, and then they would write all the things that would complete that sentence. You could just have them do one. If they're older kids, you could have them do a few more. Or springtime has, and then you would write down what springtime has and then springtime feels, okay? And then you could turn this into any kind of writing where they 
you could just simply have them write the complete sentences springtime is and then whatever their idea is springtime is rainy um, springtime has flowers so you could just have them copy the sentence for maybe the younger kids older kids you could just have them turn this into um, any kind of story or paragraph that they would like you could also do these are some quick writes so maybe you draw in a little bit every day so it, you could just have them answer if you have like a writing journal then maybe five ten minutes max super quick just to kind of get them writing and thinking about different springtime activities another thing i wanted to mention on writing different tools i have this spelling dictionary that i think is great for kids I will put a link here to a video I did for different writing resources that you might find helpful. Um, but these are a great way to help students kind of problem solve their own spelling. So instead of constantly asking you, how do you spell that? How do you spell that? They've got a resource that they can go to and the more they use it, uh, the more beneficial it kind of becomes because they know how to use it and they just can refer back to it and there's also space they can write their own words if there's something here uh, or if there's something not here that they want to spell they can add their own words um, so that is a great resource for writing so here's a math page you can work on this has addition facts and so I wanted to show you some different options if your child needs a little bit of help with that you can use these any kind of counters of course we have dinosaur counters um, but any little counter chip um, little rocks anything they can use that to help them if they need that support um, older like older first second and beyond they shouldn't really need any of these counters this is more preschool kindergarten might need this so there's counters and then we'll also show you the little math rack too so he's just finding the answer writing it on his page and then that's going to help him keep track or when he goes down to the color code to do those. These color by number pages, there's so many of them, and they're great for just a quick, easy, um, but also gives them math practice too. So this is another great tool. This is called a math rack. If you've never seen anything like it, I will put a link um, up here and down in the description box to some videos I did that kind of explain it. Um, but it's a great math tool for the early years and just learn about number sense. So he's sliding over six and he found four more so then he can find the total to help with his addition facts. So for a little science fun, we're just talking about spring weather. Kids are really interested in weather, so it's kind of a fun thing. And in the spring, you get a lot of different stuff. So last week we have been um, outside doing different weather observations and we've kind of got a little bit of everything. So this is just a little recording page. Um, he's just doing some drawings. You can use this page however you'd like. If you keep like a weather journal, you could do some of that. For older kids, they could do more um, writing with it. These younger kids, they can just kind of draw a picture to record their ideas about different spring weather. I hope you found a helpful idea or a lesson. If so, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for more math, reading, writing, and other educational activities to help your kids thrive. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.